Today I'm going to show you how to make um, some earrings like this, little fish earrings with a gradient clay and a little pearl dangle. Uh, it's made out of polymer clay and metal and such. Uh, well, I'll just go through everything that I kind of have laid out, like tools that might be necessary, some aren't, but uh, these are the things that you're kind of going to kind of need to do this. Uh, so first off, your clay. So this clay has a gradient, if you can see. It goes from light to dark. So I used three different colors for that. Blue, darker blue. <laughs> no, navy and um, dark blue. And then I have this little ceramic tile that they're sitting on here. I just bought this at Home Depot. It was like 99 cents. Uh, it's really, really handy to have. It's not necessary, but it keeps the bottom of your piece really flat when you're baking it and you can just work directly on this, put it in the oven, super handy. Uh, this is a little acrylic roller, so it's like a little rolling pin. You will definitely need that. Oh, I don't know, some sort of cool design. <laughs> There's my sound effect for everything. Uh, then I have the clay clay cutter, so it's a really sharp, thin knife from Michael's. I don't know perfect song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. This is a, a whole hand hole driller to, to drill the holes for the jewelry hardware. You can also use a Dremel for that with a little screw attachment. A uh, little pokey thing to poke stuff. I don't know, I just like to bring it. <laughs> Needle nose pliers, um, pretty necessary to put the hardware together. I have my little fish stamp, which I bought from the dollar store. I also got these from Michael's. Um, to make the indentation in the clay. And then some cutters. These look like 3D printed. I got these off Etsy. They're pretty cheap, actually. It is a cookie cutter. And then I have a metal one that I got from Amazon with a bunch of different shapes as well. And then I have just a little cup that I'm gonna put water in to clean the clay. Then you need your jewelry hardware, uh, Amazon. Pasta machine. Not necessary, but very, very handy. Your hands will get really tired rolling the clay. And uh, for the final touches, I have a Dremel with a polishing attachment. You don't have to use this, but it just makes your edges really nice and clean once you're done. I forgot to mention the little pearls. I don't remember where I got them. You can probably find them at Michael's. Just a little pearl bead. Yeah, but that's everything you should need. Okay, first step, uh, conditioning or rolling your clay. So it's really hard uh, right now, which is no good. So I'm just gonna, gonna try and soften it up with my hands. The warmth will kinda get it going. Your hand strength will be crazy. Oh my God, this stuff is so hard right now. Yeah, like kneading it, honestly, like it's already getting a little bit better here. But that's why having the passing machine is Super handy. Okay, and it like will look like that the first time you put it through, which is okay. It just needs more time to get soft. Yeah, that's right. It's just like kneading dough. Yeah, it's just like making blue pasta. Yeah. <laughs> just giving her. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're using light colors for this, um, like a white to whatever, a darker color, you're gonna wanna wash your hands in between because the clay can get on your hands. So there's a little bit of blue on my hands, but since these are all kind of similar colors, it's not really a big deal. Just start with, start rolling your lightest pieces first and then work to your dark ones. Cause it doesn't matter really. If you get a little bit of light into the dark, you can't notice it as much as the other way around. This is my workout. This is the only exercise I get. <laughs> I'm using three colors. You can use as many really as you want. You can even just use two, but and they don't even have to be all the same shade. They don't have to be blue. You can do like yellow to red or, you know, 
black to purple, whatever you want. Making some oh, yeah. spaghetti. <laughs> Chef's kiss, <laughs> yes, you bet. <laughs> so then what I want to do after you kind of condition your clay is what it's called when you run it through the pasta machine a bunch and it's kind of more workable. You kind of want to make it into a teardrop shape. I want these to be roughly the same size. And then you're gonna put one thin end to one big end like that, so they kind of match up. Okay, and then again, put the thick end to this thin end. So they're alternating. Okay, and then kind of like mush them together a little bit so they stick to each other. So we have our nice gradient stick. And then I'm gonna put it through the pasta machine over here. The more you put it through here, the easier it gets to work. See, I'm getting pieces breaking off because it's kind of dry still, but here we have this lovely um, strip. Look at that. It's kind of cool, hey? But we're gonna make a gradient. So what you're gonna do is fold this onto itself, keeping these color, the same color touching each end. So like that. And then just press down, pinch the bottom here, make sure there's kind of no air bubbles. And then where you bent it, you're gonna put it back through the pasta machine. You don't wanna do it the other way because that can trap air inside of it. It's no good. Okay, we're just gonna keep doing that over and over again. So keep these colors together. When The more you do this, the more the colors are gonna mix together, which is what creates this lovely gradient here. So you can see that these clays are starting to come together. Yeah, but I want more of this blue, this dark blue to, to come over here. So I'm just going to, instead of folding it straight, I'm gonna fold it a little off to the side so that this color starts coming through here more. Mamma mia pizzeria. <laughs> when you're doing a gradient and you've never done it before, maybe start out with really small pieces. You can blend them too much and then they just become one color if you're not happy with it. So just start out using like a really small piece so that if you do mess up, it's not a huge waste of your clay. But that's looking pretty good. Okay, so I have my little slab is what they're called. Uh, it'll definitely help if the area you're working in uh, has some moisture, then your clay won't, the edges won't break off as easily when you run it through this a bunch. I got my slab on my um, ceramic tile. So again, like I highly recommend, they're really cheap. They're like 89 cents at Home Depot and you can put them straight in the oven. Um, and I'm gonna use my little roller now. So just like this, just smooth out smooth out those little bumps that the pasta machine makes. And this clay is pretty tough, so it won't even really change the, the thickness of it. When you roll it out all that much, it'll just kind of smooth it out. So we'll do it once this way, maybe a few times this way. Okay, that's good enough. Sometimes I just like to stamp it down, make sure it's really connected to um, my tile there, so that you'll see in a minute here when you use your cutter, the, it doesn't get stuck in the cutter, it sticks to the tile itself. Oh no, get out of there. See, that's what this is for. That is really um. It's okay, we can save it. This hole is pretty big, so I'm just gonna use my finger and try and cover that hole back up by just smoothing over it. It's not perfect, but who is perfect, right? Okay, so then I have two different sizes here. I can't remember which one I used. Neither of them, actually. This is These are two different sizes. Uh, one is plastic, one is metal. Doesn't really matter what you use. This one is a lot sharper, though. Um, but clay tends to get stuck in these ones easier if they're not really stuck to the tile, just a heads up. Okay, and then you're just gonna find a place in the clay that you think looks like it has the best gradient. Like, right in the middle is gonna be the best because you're gonna get some dark, some of the middle and some of the light. And then I'm just gonna make my little circles. For my fish stamp, I think we'll make this big one. That looks pretty good. And you just, with these plastic ones, you gotta press down pretty hard, make sure that it's cut. Oh, great success. Didn't stick, which is a bonus. And then a fun and satisfying part. It's peeling up. Hopefully it, it goes off in one. I 
like, hello. <laughs> Don't be wasteful like this. You can probably get way more out of here. But if you wanna keep going on this gradient without uh, just ruining this clay, just do the same thing. Just fold it back up with the same colors, matching and matching, and just keep running it through the pasta machine. And it'll keep that gradient pretty good so that you can use it again to make more. And then comes the fun part, stamping. It's just a little stamp with a fish on it. And then I'm just gonna stamp in the middle of these or try to, you know, it's close to the middle. But I thought this would be cute. I'd never I tried this before. I was like, oh, these stamps would make. See? It's adorable. It's adorable. If you love fishes like I do, <laughs> I have like three fish on my arms. <laughs> Okay, uh, and then you're going to put them in the oven. So this specific clay says to bake them at 275 for 15 minutes for a quarter inch. Let me just read the instructions so I don't give you false information. Seriously, don't listen to me, just read your instructions. Every clay is different, uh, so they'll tell you the temperature and the time. This one, I don't know, it's somewhere. I usually just um, bake it at 275 for at least 30 minutes. You don't wanna under bake it because your clay will get brittle and it's really hard to drill holes and it's just not uh, structurally sound. It's no good, no bueno. Okay, so then we go like this and we go over to the oven. 30 minutes later, those are the unbaked ones. We're just gonna pretend but I do have some ones that I baked already. So we'll drill holes in the top and bottom. I'm sure you could use a ruler and like make sure they're perfectly centered, but we ain't got time for that. So we're just gonna eyeball it cause it's fine. Again, you can use a Dremel with the drill attachment. It's way faster than this. And you wanna do that on a piece of wood, which I don't have, I forgot. So I'm just gonna be really careful to not wreck my um, tile. Uh, you don't wanna drill these holes too close to the bottom, like the edges, just in case you're, I mean, if you baked your clay properly, it should be pretty strong, but just be careful. Okay, and then we have our little holes. Okay, they're not perfect. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put all my hardware on. And obviously there's so many different things you can do with clay earrings. You don't have to add the pearl dangly. You can. Just be a free, creative, beautiful human. You know, do whatever you want. Oh, I got my jump rings. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight jump rings. Okay. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Jump rings. You need to have two just so that when you attach the hook, well, that and the hook, the hook will face backwards, right, towards the ear. Okay, so I'm just opening the jump ring, grabbing one side, and tw twisting. I'm gonna take my other one, just pop it on there. It's already closed, kind of, so. And then I'm gonna put it on my little octopus. Yeah, and then just put this guy through here. And then I'm gonna close this just by pinching that jump ring closed. So I got that little guy. You do. Am I a random cool pearl holder that I made? When you're opening these, instead of like pulling the circle open, just just like the jump rings, just twist it to the side so that it keeps the the circle shape better. Close it back up. Oh my god, my hands are so dirty. <laughs> That's clay, baby. That's clay. Um, okay, same thing for this, because this is just the exact same as the hoop. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's right. Like, like that. Oh, that's a good shot. Look at that. There you go. And then 
and just close it. And there we have a little octopus to ignore the other ones. Ooh, ooh, she's a mermaid. She's a sea goddess. <laughs> If you do decide to sand or polish your clay pieces and you're using a Dremel or a power tool, please protect your eyes. Very important. I remember the first time I ever did it, there was dust flying up in my eyes, flying in my face. Also, wearing a mask is probably a good idea as well. Um, and that is how you make these lovely gradient fish earrings. Oh, these, <laughs> these lovely ombre fish earrings with materials that you can mostly find at the dollar store or at a Home Depot, Walmart, that type of thing. Michaels. It's fun, it's fantastic, it's easy. Anyone can do it, especially like if I can do it, you can definitely do it. So these beautiful little earrings will be in my store and I will put a link to my store in the description below if you are interested in becoming a beautiful mermaid as well. Yeah, if you see anything in my shop and you'd like to know how to make it, just leave a comment below, say, oh, can you show me how to make these resin earrings? Earrings, can you show me how to make these polymer clay earrings or how to do this? And I will happily do that. That's it for today. <laughs> you said say what you say. <laughs> I'm trying to be a good, good student. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like. If you have any questions about anything I did or where I got my products, uh, just comment them down below and I'll try to get back to everyone right away. And we will see you guys hopefully next time. Bye. Okay. <laughs> the end, yeah. I'm <laughs> sorry.